Well, welcome to December, people. And as you guys officially know, as it is December, I get to start listening to Christmas music because I've forbidden myself in November to even, even think Christmas. But here we are, December, it's Christmas. So Merry Christmas, everybody. Ah, aren't you guys excited? Like for me, the excitement all begins, you know, with the cutting down of Christmas trees. And that's what's happening yesterday. Again, there's some Christmas trees out in the parking lot. If you don't have one yet, go ahead and buy one in support of Camp Tlachitic. But the Christmas tree is probably the thing that begins Christmas the most for me. So yesterday, as a family of three, we we're missing two. First time in 20 years uh, that we've gone without uh, our oldest daughter and first time in 17 years that we've gone just three of us to cut down a Christmas tree. It's become a tradition of ours. Of course, you go ahead and put the Christmas tree up. We've got a six foot tall Christmas tree stand. It says you can put six foot tr uh, a Christmas tree stand. We've always used this Christmas tree stand, six footer, uh, for our 12 foot Christmas tree. So last year, my wife, uh, you know, was dismayed when she heard a huge crash in the living room. After everything was fully decorated, the tree decided it had enough and decided to come fully down. So that kind of ruined the hope of Christmas for a little bit until I got some fishing line up, re-put up the Christmas tree. And this year, she said, where's the fishing line? And so we've tied the, the, the tree to the fishing line. But again, the iconic part of all of our Christmas trees is the gifts underneath neath the tree, right? So at this point, as the tr a Christmas tree is up, we'll begin to put some Christmas presents underneath the Christmas tree. And ironically, we also have a Christmas tree here in our church, and we've got five gifts under the Christmas tree. Not only do we just have five gifts under the Christmas tree, but there's five candles in our Advent wreath, and it's all part and parcel to our desire to, to see the gifts of Christmas this year. Today we're going to be talking about the hope of Christmas, and each week we're going to invite someone to come and open a gift that represents one of the candles. So today I want to invite up Jamie and Carol Flower as they open up the gift of hope and begin the Christmas season here at KBC. So Carol and Jamie, take it away. Um, hope. We have selected a gift from our home and we just wanna share a story that happened in our family, True Life, and, uh, and how it really signifies for us what hope is. Um, when the kids were talking, I noticed there was two different types of hope that were represented there. In the world, hope has been really watered down. Hope is wishful thinking. And there has in it that, that sense of uncertainty and are we going to get it, you know, or not. It's not really sure. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about biblical hope. And I learned from my son Daniel this last couple of days um, that the hope candle is also a prophecy cam candle. And I think that's really, uh, um, that's the clue, is that our hope is based on a word from God. It's not a wishy-washy, it's a sure thing. And so you can take it to the bank, right, hon? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so that, that kind of came off the cuff. Um, I'm just, so, so biblical hope. For us, as a, as a single-income family with our children, um, we had made the commitment that I would be in the home raising the kids. And so that meant a lot of things, a lot of extras weren't going to happen. And, uh, and as the kids got older, and especially Krista, as she's watching cousins go on big trips all over the place and other friends going on big trips, that was always something that was just not possible for us to do that. And then Jamie came home to me one day early in December and said, I think we can take the kids to Disney for Christmas this year. And I'm like, what? So for those that don't know us, uh, I recently retired, but my career had been in banking, so <laughs> that's why there was a bit of laughter there. But being a single income family, we purposefully chose to go that route for various reasons. Uh, so a single income, but also extra expenses. We homeschooled, so the expenses that went along with that. We just 
never felt that, that traveling to Florida or Disney was ever really going to be doable. Wishful thinking, but it wasn't going to happen. And then at one point, a number of years ago, I realized that the points that I had accumulated through an employee recognition program and, and also the points on the visa card, I, I was never really keen on redeeming them for a blender or a toaster. That's what I thought the points were for. But I realized that we could instead combine the two of them and use them for uh, travel monies, for traveling. And based on that, I started to look in to see what was doable. Um, there was a seat sale flight-wise, and the points would have more than covered the uh, flight cost to get to and from uh, Florida. And <laughs> coincidentally, a coworker of mine had uh, timeshare that she was not going to be using in Orlando, and there was the accommodation piece figured out. So it was at that point, Carol and I discussed it, and we were excited. We bought the tickets, and really, it was at that point for me that that wishful thinking hope had transitioned into the confident assurance that we indeed would be traveling and we just needed to wait that couple of weeks for it to actually happen. So you can imagine Christmas morning, Jamie and I were very excited. And, uh, and Jamie organized this scavenger hunt thing for clues and it was Krista that it really hit her. She's the one that got it first. And, uh, and just that excitement. And you could see it in the kids because we were going like within two weeks or three weeks of, of Christmas. So they didn't have long to wait. But you could see in them the hope. It was a sure thing. The tickets were bought. We were going. But they hadn't gotten there yet. They hadn't gotten there yet. That's, that's what I want you to visualize. I want you to visualize that when you think about biblical hope. Do you want to open that? <laughs> um, we have a sure hope. And, and it's sure because God promised it. And what he promised it was that he would come and provide in himself our salvation, our redemption. He is the one that gives us um, that future hope to be with him forever. Just like it was in the very beginning, he wants to be with us. And so we have our, our Disney hope represents our eternal hope. And uh, the other thing that I want you to think about is, is God has already given us the engagement ring of that hope in the Holy Spirit that he gives us. And that we have a taste of heaven now that is, is also just tells us that we have that hope, that future. It's a sure thing in Jesus. And so as you think about it, it transforms how you live this life when you have that hope of what's to come, that everything in this life can't even touch it. So as we light the candle of hope, just let that simmer down in through this Christmas that it is a sure thing. We are going to be forever with the Lord. And you know, it was hope that kept Jesus going when he was here. It was for the joy set before him. He endured the cross and scorned the shame because what? He, there was a hope that he had. And you know what that is? It's us. It's us. He wants us. It's the only thing he didn't have before he went to the cross. That's his hope. So good. If you don't mind if I open up scripture with you, do you today? If you do not mind, John chapter 16. John chapter 16. We're going to be talking today about that whole idea of wishing for something versus hoping for something. A lot of kids wish they can get to places like Disneyland. But when there's an assurance that, that comes with a gift, hope jumps in and it becomes a sure thing. Our English language fails to separate the meaning between wishing and hoping. We often combine the two. And, and in fact, we think that hope is a synonym for wishing. 
And that's not the case at all. So we'll talk about that today as we begin reading John chapter 16, begin reading in verse 17. And this is vitally important as we begin to understand this whole concept of the difference between wishing and hoping. Some of his disciples said to one another, what does he mean by saying, in a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? And because I am going to the Father, they kept asking, what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he is saying. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, so he said to them, are you asking one another what I, I meant when I said, in a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief. But I will see you again, and I will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will be, you'll no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth. My Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Though I have, come, have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but I will tell you plainly about my Father. In that day, you will ask in my name. I'm not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because, of you, because you have lo look, loved me and believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and entered into the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. Then Jesus' disciples said, Now are you speaking clearly and without figures of speech? Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. You believe at last, Jesus answered, but as a time is coming, a time is coming and has come, when you will be scattered, each of it, to his own home, you will leave me all alone. Yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things so that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Father, as we go into this conversation with the difference between wishing and hoping, I pray especially in this moment that you speak into the hearts, the place you've placed your Holy Spirit into these people and allow them to hear the hope of the world in Jesus. May the words that I speak today only be words that I've uh, learned from time with you and not be worldly words, human words, but words that you've given me from your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. What did you hope would come for Christmas as a child? What did you hope for? You remember every November, there was these kids that showed up in our household. You guys know who these kids are, right? Anybody know who these two kids are? What about these next one, the next one here? Anybody know who she is? Starting to recognize her? Next one? Maybe her. You guys recognizing these people? What about these two? These two particularly were important to me. They, these two kids showed up in my house in 1986. 1986 in November, these kids showed up in my house in this form of this book. Yeah, you guys remember it? Remember 1986, the wish book. Every kid remembers this. This was the book. This was the internet for us in the 80s. And we would open this book and, and, and see stuff like this as kids. Remember this, ladies? Anybody, any ladies circle this on their, uh, on their, on their desire list or their wish list? Uh, there was that, yeah, you, a little bit of fur coat. What, what's the next picture we got here? Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah, I think there's a couple. Jim, Bonnie, do you have those red outfits? Yeah. I'm picturing it now. Oh, what about this? I can see it now. Good old ladies, eh? 
80, so this is the wish book, but and ladies, I don't know, this was the workout clothing from back in the day. Misses and women, ready for the active season? Yeah, the wish book. But here it is. You know, at the time I was uh, eight years old, and you know, the, the Thundercats were the thing back in the day. So I'm like, Mom, Dad, this is what I really, really wish for for Christmas. And I would circle things. I would circle all kinds of things in the wish book. And that would give an easy hint for my parents to open up the wish book and, and uh, see all the circles. Anybody else circle the wish book? You guys remember this, right? So the Thundercat, I'd, I'd circle each little individual one that I really, really wanted. But this was also the year. Do you remember the year of the, 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 oh, the era of surprise and excitement? This was one of the, this was the wish book from 1985. If you go back one year, 1985, and just the surprise in this young lady's. And this was it. This was 1985, number 15, I circled it. I circled, this was, uh, again, you know, thun, uh, you know, we had the Thundercats, but then we had the Transformers. 1985, and this was what I really circled. This was the Astro Train. The Astro Train is what I was tremendously hoping for. And I circled it, and I wanted this. And Christmas morning came, and I started opening all the gifts, you know, the gifts from Santa Claus, the gifts from my parents, and, and there was no Astro Train under the tree that I could really pick out. I figured I'd gone through all of the presents that Santa had given me, all the presents my parents had, and my hope was dashed. What I'd wished for did not come true until this one little package that my sister brought over. My sister walked over and restored my hope because it was the exact size package that I was hoping for. I opened it up, and my sister had saw that little circle in the book and says, I think I can get that for my brother. It's the right price range, eleven ninety nine, and she restored my hope in a gift that I'd wished for. How many people have had stories like that, where their hope was ignited because they saw the true form of what they wished for? How many people's wishes came true? You see, wishing in the English language really pales in comparison to what hope is. I circled probably 150 things in the wish book. I, like, I would circle, and I would circle just wishing that I would get 150 gifts under the Christmas tree. I was kind of a uh, really in-demand child. I was like, I really wanted everything, and I wished for it. See, wishing is about a past or present improbable, unlikely to happen, is the way the dictionary defines it. Wishing is something that just probably won't come true. But hoping, on the other hand, is a future thing that is possible or likely to happen. There is a transition between wishing and hoping that just like that gift I received that year, and when I saw the physical form, I was assured that my wishing had transformed into a hope. See, in the end, I knew I would get something for Christmas. But the things I wished for only come true when the physical is present. See, in the end, hope is about love. And I knew in that moment my sister really loved me. Because she came through on a hope or a wish that fulfilled the hope. Hope does not exist unless we believe it. We only use hope if we have faith it will happen. I struggle sometimes at funerals when you just feel that the family is wishing that the person that they're grieving ends up in a place of comfort in heaven. Wishing someone is in a place of security pales in comparison to the hope that we have in Jesus when we know that that place that they have gone is real. Wishes don't always come true. Let's go back to the Bible for a second. The word wish 
in the New Testament is rarely used. In this section here, we have Jesus saying, in this world, you will have trouble. You will have trouble. Doesn't sound like much of a hope to me. There's a secured, real uh, knowledge that there will be trouble. Jesus is promising this. But what do we do as human beings? We wish that it weren't so. We wish that we wouldn't have physical pain. We wish that there was no broken relationships. We wish there was no addictions. We wish for certain things not to happen to us. In this world, you will have trouble. That's the wish. But here's the promise. See, we can wish to avoid trouble, but we can hope in this assurance that Jesus says to us these words, take heart, I have overcome the world. See, that's the difference between wishing and hoping. We can wish something won't happen to us, but we can hope in the fact that there is victory at the end of the line. Wishes will fail, but hope never will. Can I share with you five scriptures that Jesus gave to me while away on a time of reprieve in the Dominican? Now, I know that we sometimes read scripture wishing that God would say something to us. But if we read scripture with the hope that God will, God will answer it. Philippians chapter 4. As I was reading scripture the past month, I begin to hope that God will say something to me. Now, hope is not a wish. Hope is the reality that it will actually happen. And so as I'm reading Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, God just enlightens me with these words. And my God will meet all your needs. Did you hear that again? My God will meet all my needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. When I read this, I began to think of the hope that I have that Christ will meet all of my needs. But then I began to realize that there there are riches that Christ has stored up for us. There's an abundance of riches that he wants to pour down to us with a desire to fulfill that hope. As I kept reading through to Colossians, and these letters from Paul just began to just jump off the pages to me. Colossians chapter 1, verse 5. Now just allow these words to sink in. The words that I'm about to read are from the Passion Translation, the translation of the Bible that I've been reading for the last year. And as I read these verses, begin to see the hope that Christ has for each one of us. Colossians chapter 1, verse 5. Your faith and love rise within you as you access all the treasures of your inheritance stored up in the heavenly realm. For the revelation of the true gospel is as real today as the day you first heard of our glorious hope. Now that you have believed in the truth of the gospel, Jump ahead to verse 11. And we pray that you would be energized with all his explosive power from the realm of his magnificent glory, filling you with great hope. Colossians chapter 1, verse 23. If indeed you continue to advance in faith, assured of a firm foundation to grow upon, Never be shaken from the hope of the gospel you have believed in. And this is the glorious news I preach all over the world. Hope. Hope is not a figment of our imagination. Jesus actually never talked about hope. In the Old Testament, it was talked about as a 
prophecy. Psalm chapter 62, verse 5 says, Yes, my soul finds rest in God. My hope comes from Him. Having never mentioned hope, Jesus became the hope. In fact, I think there was a point where the disciples wished Jesus would stick with them. And then a moment after his death, it went from wishing that he didn't die, wishing that they continue, can continue in life without him, to the resurrection happening that instilled hope in the world. Wishing went to hope. And we sub- celebrate the beginning of the timeline of hope with Advent. Jesus came into the world as a little baby. And all along, people were wishing for a Savior that would conquer the nations. Instead, they received hope. And through that resurrection, 33 years later, the people of Israel received the hope of a Savior. He came. Christmas is more than just wishing about things. Christmas is about celebrating the hope of the resurrection. The last wish book ever was 2017. It was a sad day for a lot of us, I'm sure. Sears holds a deep, like, tradition in all of our lives. This was the picture of the last wish book. But wishing did not end when that wish book ended. Hope did not end. Jesus promised a resurrection, and he rose, which gives us hope that the good news of him living in us is real. We're going into a time of communion right now, which reminds us of the hope of the world. It's a time where we get to celebrate together. So as the worship team comes up, I really want to dive into Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. As we transition our thoughts from a wishing to a hoping and realizing that hope is real, just listen again to the words that Paul writes in Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. Living within you, is the Christ who floods you with the expectation of glory. The mystery of Christ embedded within us becomes a heavenly treasure chest of hope filled with the riches of glory for his people. And God wants everyone to know it. So the question I have as we go into a time of communion Are you wishing that Jesus is real? Are you wishing that Christmas has a meaning? Or do you live with the hope that is embedded within each one of us? Are you living with the hope of the heavenly treasure? And that same treasure is the treasure we celebrate during this communion.